Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and thank you so much for coming out. I know it's really cold outside, and you all didn't have to do that. You could have stayed at home and, you know, watched television or something. I'm sure there are crime scenes that need investigating. Or, um, housewives that need to keep it real. or Anything. So... I appreciate you all coming out, cause, and it is really cold, and you all came out and chose to see me. Like, you all could have gone to a Broadway show. You could have gone to see Spider-Man. <laughs> here, here, I'm a comic book fan. I like comic books. I really wanted to write my own comic book one day. I was going to call it Spider-Man. <laughs> now, before you call Marvel's lawyers, my comic book was not about a man who gets powers after being bitten by a radioactive spider, but it was about a spider who gets bitten by a radioactive man. <laughs> so he doesn't really have any powers, per se. He just kind of sits on the couch, plays Xbox, <laughs> complains about how he's overqualified for the job he's got, <laughs> and just tries to stay one step ahead of his arch nemesis, Black Spider-Man. Who's just an exterminator named Tyrone? <laughs> but no, thank you all so much for coming out. I really, I appreciate it. Also because, no offense, but this show is not for you all. Like this, you guys were impatient and you came to see me tonight, but I'm actually doing this for television. There are cameras around and this is for TV. Like this is for these people. Like, hey, you guys good? How you doing? You on the couch? Yeah, look at you. Mmm, what are you eating? That looks good. You know what? Get cozy. Take your pants off. You can do it. Yeah. Not like these idiots. They were impatient. I don't even know who they are. They're just a bunch of meat-filled skin bags I found. You know what? I'll see you later. I'll see you at home. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I just had to say that for TV's benefit. You all aren't meat-filled skin bags. You're all lovely people. But I had to say it for TV. Because I love TV. TV, I'm biased because TV pays my rent. And TV is the best roommate you could ever have. It is. TV never leaves dishes in the sink. With TV, when you come home, TV's never bugging you with stories about how Peggy in accounting's an asshole. But she wouldn't take your time card after five. <laughs> Come home and TV's just like, oh man, you'll never believe what's happening in Afghanistan. <laughs> Ugh, that sounds depressing, TV. You're right. You want to watch two ladies make out? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Thank you, TV. Don't worry about your half of the rent. I was at a party recently, because I have friends who invite me places. <laughs> but I was at this party and I was talking with this group of people and in this group, this guy starts talking about how there was a robbery in his neighborhood. And I was like, oh, that reminds me of this episode of Law and Order. Which it actually reminds me of like every episode of Law and Order. <laughs> but before I can finish, the guy cuts me off and he's like, I don't watch TV, I have better things to do. Which then I felt bad, because I was like, oh, maybe he's poor. <laughs> but then, everybody else in the group starts chiming in. They all hate TV. Like this couple, they knew the exact date they threw out their TV. They celebrate the anniversary <laughs> of when they became boring. <laughs> and then there was this guy and he's talking about how he threw out his TV and he reads all these books and he's gotten so much healthier and he's lost all this weight. Mm-mm. No. no. Then this one lady, I think she was just trying to fit in and she was like, I threw out a 42-inch plasma. I gave it to a hobo. And everybody like clapped for her. And now I'm feeling embarrassed. I feel like I've just shown up to this party with a booger hanging off my dick. Like that's how embarrassed they made me feel that I showed up to a party with no pants on and something that belongs in my nose on my penis. 
And now the whole world knows about my secret booger penis. And now they're starting to yell at me and they're just like, I don't know how you could watch it. It's such a waste of time. And I finally, like, I lose it. I'm like, all right, calm down, everybody. Just calm down, okay? You know what? I get it. You all hate TV. You hate TV. That's fine. But you know where else you can find terrible stuff? In books. <laughs> you think Snooki's a piece of shit? Read her book. <laughs> yeah. Everybody you hate on TV, they probably have a book. There are some shitty books out there. Books that'll rot your brain, they'll ruin your eyes if you read them in the dark. <laughs> but nobody ever seems to lose their shit when a new Twilight book comes out. <laughs> no, nobody's ever like, ew, books are ruined. They're ruined forever. Get them all out of my house. Uh, yucky, no. Throw out all the Pulitzers. From now on, I'll get my information the old fashioned way by reading Deer Scat. <laughs> Ooh, here's an interesting tale about a deer that ate carrots. <laughs> yep, those are carrots. I'm gonna have trouble putting this down. I think part of the reason I get so annoyed by people who hate television is because I have a neighbor who is one of these TV-hating people. She hates television and she's really snotty about it. Like really snotty about it to the point where she'll come over to my place and she'll hang out and then if the TV's on, she'll roll her eyes, go back to her apartment, crochet herself a bird bath. <laughs> and then to add insult to injury, she'll jack up her stereo and start blasting NPR through the walls. <laughs> now there are certain things that you can blast through a stereo. You can blast hip-hop, you can blast heavy metal. You can't blast all things considered. <laughs> and just think I'm gonna be like, oh shit, are they talking about that new Michael Chabon book? That's my jam. Turn it up. I wanna hear what they have to say about his perceptive use of metaphors. I don't even own a car, but I love when the car talk guys talk about leaf spring suspensions. <laughs> but that's what my neighbor does. She's really, really snooty about the fact that she hates TV. She's also really, really attractive. <laughs> and I've never had an attractive neighbor before. Never had. Normally my neighbors tend to be old people or what seems like an army of parentless children. <laughs> I just assume they were like, whisked away in the middle of the night by Peter Pan. <laughs> and then somewhere along the way to Never Never Land, he got sick of them and dropped them off in a studio apartment in a Dominican neighborhood. <laughs> but now, I have an attractive neighbor. And I've watched enough television that I know what's supposed to happen. <laughs> like, I know that we're supposed to hang out, like go to the local coffee shop, complain about our relationship problems. Our friends are like, you two should get together. We're like, no, we shouldn't, should we? <laughs> Maybe we both get jobs at the chocolate factory and the conveyor belt's moving too fast. <laughs> we start jamming chocolate down the mouth and down shirts. You know? <laughs> the holidays come. We're both snowed in, can't go home for the holidays. Power goes out, we're forced to hold each other for warmth. Next thing you know, we're making out. By sweeps, she's moved into my place. We've turned her place into a detective agency. <laughs> That's what's supposed to happen, but she doesn't know that because she doesn't watch TV. <laughs> Recently, I was in my apartment. I was hanging out with a friend of mine. We were riding up and down the elevator. It's, it's what we do. We're adults. We can do that. But we were hanging out, and we were talking about the show Top Chef. I like the show. It's a fun show. My very attractive TV-hating neighbor happens to get on the elevator with us with her laundry, and we're just talking, and she overhears us, and she starts screaming at me, Shut up! Shut up! Don't ruin it! 
And I'm like, whoa, slow down. I'm not talking about a movie. I'm talking about a TV show, don't worry. And they're not going to turn it into a book. I mean, if they do, it's a cookbook. And spoiler alert, the ending's delicious. She snaps at me and she's like, I know what Top Chef is. I love Top Chef. I watch it all the time on my laptop. You own a TV. <laughs> and not just any TV, this little self-righteous jerk owns a super TV. Because she owns a TV that allows her to watch TV, play Scrabble, and poop at the same time. <laughs> if I want to do that, I have to drag a trash can into the living room. Chances are, whoever I'm playing Scrabble with doesn't really appreciate it. <laughs> but a computer is a television. Let's just close that loophole right now. A computer is a TV. It's called computer TV. I love computer TV. I watch it at work. That's how I keep up on all my stories. And by stories, I mean cat videos. I love cat videos. I love cat videos. I saw this one video of this cat. <laughs> this cat, he jumps into this box. And then he jumps out of the box. Then he jumps back into the box. And just when you think he's gonna stay in the box, he jumps back out of the box! And he does this over and over and over again for 9 minutes and 38 seconds. I know because I watched the whole fucking thing. I loved it! I loved it. And millions of people have watched this video. Millions of people love this video. They've seen this video of this cat jumping in and out of this box. It's really popular. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder how other popular things do on YouTube. And I was thinking, you know who's popular? The president. He's a popular guy. He also makes YouTube videos. Don't know if you know that. He considers himself something of a filmmaker. He does, he's got his own little YouTube channel, and I figured, I wonder how one of his videos would do compared to this cat video. <laughs> so I went to go look at one of his videos, and it was a video where it was talking to people about what you could do to help those in the Gulf region who'd been affected by the Gulf region. <laughs> 500 people had watched that video. 500. I felt so bad that I kept hitting refresh over and over again. Because this is the president of the United States and he is getting his ass handed to him by a cat and a box. That's embarrassing. Like, I feel so bad for him that I feel like anytime he's in town, I just want to run behind him with some cats and some boxes. Like, just throw him in the background. Don't tell him, but just let them hang out in the background and do their thing because their approval rate never goes down. It doesn't. People love cat videos. Here's how much people love cat videos. I love cat videos. I hate cats! That's ridiculous logic! I hate the Boston Red Sox. I don't go buy season tickets to go see the Boston Red Sox because that would be stupid! But I love cat videos. And I don't know why. I wish I understood why. And I've tried to understand why. I've spent many hours thinking about why. I figured, you know what I'll do? I'll just read the comments that other people have left on these videos. Because maybe that could give me some insight as to why I like them so much. So I started going through the comments, and it's typical stuff, like, you know, ha 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 ha. R-O-T-F-L. Which I know that means rolling on the floor laughing, but I like to think it means reaching out to fellow losers. But I'm going through the comments, going through the comments, and I finally see this one comment that stops me in my tracks. And this is a comment. It said, Oh my God, I want that cat. That nigger is adorable. Here's the thing. 
This cat was not black. It was adorable. That was the right adjective. But I don't know what this cat did to become a nigger. Like, it's just a cat happily jumping in and out of a box. Like, I could understand if it was jumping in and out of a box of Newport cigarettes. That's an adorable nigger cat. That is. Because he's got to be really tiny to jump in and out of a cigarette box. How could you not love that? Or, or if the box represented the duality of trying to live in a homogenized society while at the same time struggling to hold on to your fragmented cultural identity and because those two worlds are constantly in conflict you must jump between them like a nigger cat But to just call the cat a nigger because you don't know any pronouns. That's silly. And here's the thing. I know black people that use the word nigger. I know black people that say it. I know, I know black people that say it a lot. I used to say it. I used to say it a lot. I don't really say it that much anymore because I work a job. <laughs> where I'm one of the few black people. Y'all didn't let me finish. You racists. I work a job where I'm one of the few black people, so it's not very professional to be like, hey, nigga, you got a fax. <laughs> Who's he talking to? It's just him and Andre who work here. <laughs> Seems really rude. He could have just said, hey, Andre, you have a fax. <laughs> so I don't say it that much, but I understand people who do say it, and I understand the argument that a lot of black people have for saying it. A lot of black people say they say the word nigger because they're co-opting it. They're taking it back and taking the hateful power out of it. Sounds like a good idea. I'm curious to know when we're actually going to get the hateful power out of it. <laughs> like, is it a tit-for-tat thing? Do I have to say two niggers for every time someone else said it? Like, what do I have to invest into this reclamation project? Because it still seems pretty hateful, still seems pretty powerful. We're definitely desensitized to it. Like, we're desensitized to it because you can watch, like, a Laker game. You'll see a Laker game, and you'll see, like, Ron Artest or somebody, and it'll be like, hey, nigga, I'm open. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It slips through the broadcast. There's no FCC fine. Somebody passes him the ball. <laughs> but let Jack Nicholson get up from the sidelines, like, yeah, nigga, he's open. You can't handle the rock. That's problematic. Jack Nicholson's gonna have to do some Hanes commercials with Michael Jordan. Hope people forget. Calling a cat a nigger. Here's my other problem with this. You call a cat a nigger, then you can't go and get mad when other people want to use that word because you're throwing it around like some kind of black smurf. Smurfs never got mad at that if Gargamel was like, I'm feeling pretty Smurfy. No Smurf was ever like, uh, homie, hold up a second. Uh, no, you need to Smurf that right now. No. See, let me explain something to you. That is a term of ensmurfment between me and my Smurf brethren. So you need to Smurf the hell on out of here. Take your damn nigga cat Azriel with you. Go.